What is going on? I just completely ripped the mic off the desk a second ago. <laughs> I think we're good though, but hope everyone's doing well. Happy Friday. Um, make sure, yeah, we're good. I just have to re readjust, make sure this thing can actually move because I just ripped it off. Dude, what is going on? Yeah, like, I don't know. This thing is a pain in the ass sometimes, like, with how easy it is to just screw it up. Uh, I think I got it though. We're moving. We're moving and grooving. Um, what is going on? Hope everyone's doing well on this Friday. It is 3.16 Eastern time. I made my head fatter so you can look at it. My beautiful face. Uh, maybe this will be better for other purposes, but I just figured that I want to try this out. So what's going on? Hope you guys are doing well. Marcel Flippa, what do we We have a little spy dump actually as we speak. So let me just pull it up. Uh, I guess I'll go to spy and uh pull up that chart down point two not much i mean honestly like it's as crazy as it sounds like it it's been kind of boring man it's been kind of boring if you ask me now maybe this is just going to be kind of a flag before eventually going higher for all we know and in the grand scheme when you look at the bigger picture charts you know this is going to be like oh you know this the, the, the grind continues as you can see so who knows but um if you look at today's price action yeah, that's pretty. Sh I mean, yeah, there's you can do stuff with that, but you know, it's not really crazy. It's not trending. You know, yesterday's price action wasn't really crazy either. You know, you really haven't trended that much. Y your movement off of Powell on Wednesday was pretty substantial, from like five fifteens, finishing up around the five low five twenties. But we've not been able to crack above from that point on. Really, we've been in this range from 521 to 524. So that's a really tight range. Like when you think about it, it's a half a percent on SPY, which is not that much in the grand scheme, if you ask me. I don't know, but uh, pretty boring since. Uh, there'll be a trade recap out for my gold trade that I had closed out. It's small. Uh, it's really small. I'll explain more about that in a second. Um, and I still have an open position on the S&P futures and I have a new position on NVIDIA. Believe it or not, yes, NVDA has entered the chat. Now, this, if I can find it, uh, which it's right here, I have it. So check this out. So here's my thought process on NVIDIA. Um, it's pretty straightforward in my view. It's actually like very, you know, nice. I like this look a lot. I was on the four hour chart and I was like, whoa, what do we got going on here? Uh, I see a nice little break above the highs. I see a nice consolidation really the past like day and a half and, uh, a little perk and volume, nothing crazy, but a little perk and volume. If you go to the daily chart, I think we can see a bit. Yeah, you're going to have better volume today. You still got 20 or 40 minutes to go. So you're going to get better volume. You're already at the same amount of volume you had the past two days on NVIDIA. And it's been one of the strongest stocks. So I am going to ride with one of the strongest stocks on the four hour break there. And once it broke out, I got in. So my entry is actually right around 27, uh, sorry, 927, 928, I want to say in that area in that neck of the woods. And uh, yeah, we're looking for now. <clears throat> my stop loss is underneath today's low. So like 907, 908. And uh, I'm looking, it's a swing trade. So I'm holding over the weekend. I don't really care. I'm fine with that. Uh, I am looking for, you know, to be honest with you, I'm looking to actually break these highs in, in, all per in, a, in a perfect world. However, depending upon what happens, if we get up towards that area and we have a massive re rejection or reaction, I might lock some gains uh, depending on how price action looks. So that's my that's my new position. Is it a big position? No, but it's a new one. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, in the meantime, we kind of have this like unfortunate, no, not really that bad, but it's kind of pain in the ass. Like I'm, I'm now technically operating upon three, really only two accounts, but three accounts. Now, why three? They'll all eventually, hopefully in the next like two weeks, be consolidated to then just copy the trades from the parent account to the other accounts but to the slave accounts, as they say, but we are in the process of making sure that all works properly. So, but in the way I'm trading, I'm not trading on the five minute charts. I'm trading on four hour charts. If I had to go into each individual account, I could and enter the trades. Uh, it's just a kind of a pain in the ass to do so. But, but yeah, that's the thing. So that's the new one. That's really the only thing that I have cooking. That's new gold. We got stopped out of now in the grand scheme, this may be a fine, like this may be fine. My original stop loss on gold was actually underneath here. Uh, I moved that up to, I believe, somewhere in here, and that got stopped out today. 
Uh, I was going to move it to break even, but I ended up not I ended up not moving it to break even in time and then it hit down here. So I was like, I'm just going to leave it where it was and then eventually it got stopped out. Um, so it was a, not a bad loss, but the thing is on this play was looking back, I'm like, if gold was going to go, like, I, again, it may, I don't like that. Like, come on. You know what I mean? Maybe gold is just not the, the vehicle of choice for me going forward or just in general maybe it doesn't respect my strategy very very well had a very nice break of the four hour trend line that's that's for sure if you got in early the problem is that you would have had to to play that break you would have had to get in prior to jerome powell speaking which i was not going to do so you know um that's the deal on that one but that stopped me out maybe it ends up holding this area and then just kind of retesting and going eh, maybe the big picture charts, I still like. They're very nice, I think, on, on gold, but don't like that look. Weekly, that's a really big upper wick. I don't like it, and so we got stopped out, and that's it. It's nothing crazy on that, though. Um, but yeah, so I guess we can get rid of some of these lines. Uh, I'll get rid of them once I do the trade recap, so let's, I'll do that later today. And I'll probably post that tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. But you pretty much got the recap there. Uh <laughs> Selling off. Yeah, it's selling off here. Not, I mean, the thing is, it's not that much. The range has been tight. So uh, we wait for the next week. The If you're looking for signs, one of the signs that I may be, you know, thinking about and that that could be interesting is the 10-year is down again today. It's actually, you know, kind of double topping off this area. If you want to call that a double top, if you want to jump to the weekly chart, you can kind of see a better view of that. But yeah, it's um, this is the spot that it, can't seem to get above so far this year right around this 4.33 4. you know 35 give or take and i would suspect that if it can't bounce off this 420 or 4.2 and, and push back up we might have a decent little pull in, in the cards down towards four maybe below that so we'll see what i would be looking at really is just this this general let me get rid of some of this shit not that these are in these are good lines but kind of have this like this range, right? See this, this, this channel. Is it perfect? No. But towards the bottom of that channel would put you somewhere in the ballpark of, you know, 4.1-ish on the 10-year. And then if it breaks below that and we break below this this low at like 4.03, then then maybe we would drop below 4, maybe, maybe. But that's kind of the area that I'd be looking at is down into here would be the next spot on uh, the 10-year if it can't hold this 4.2, like, area. So... That's down. The dollar, on the other hand, is up. So that's definitely fighting against the gold trade, right? The dollar is very, very strong. The past two days actually it was weak on Wednesday. And then it was very, it's been very, very strong since. Whether that is uh, it's not a bad, it's just it is what it is. So that's fighting against gold pretty heavily, even though gold's been pretty strong all considered as of late, despite the dollar, generally speaking, big picture, not really doing a lot. It's just been in this tight range of a few bucks on DXY which, you know, not trending, yet gold has been trending up. Silver is at the top of its range over the, well, it, it hit the top of its range of the past year, and then it rejected pretty hard, which is not super surprising, especially with the dollar, and then just based off, you know, support resistance basics, you can kind of make sense of that. It, it makes sense to me. So there's that. Uh, oil's flat on the day, trending up, but not really doing much. I just don't like oil right here. I'm skeptical, heavily skeptical of it, but I won't trade it nor north or south for a while until either it gets down here or we probably push up into this area. And that would be the thoughts on that. Um, yeah. Short the micro, the British pound futures. It's a long corn. <laughs> That's been a while, right? You've been in that for a while. Uh, if you're looking for... Well, that's got earnings coming up, so that's a no-go. But GameStop's breaking down here. It just seems like any you don't want to short GameStop randomly, but like any bounce, like substantial bounce, has been a decent short with patience. But again, that's tough to just randomly trade that way. I would never trade that way, but you know, it's kind of working. Arc back into it's just consolidation. So well, not back. It never really left. So it's been here for a while, for over a month actually, uh, more than a month. So despite, it's kind of funny, despite the breakout to new highs on the S&P, the Dow, and everything, did we get that on cues? Yeah, we did, barely. Despite the break to new highs, we really haven't had, like, massive follow-through. 
you can look at this as, as just, you know, a little pull. And then maybe next week we just go over zoom up. Maybe for all we know. The trend super strong to the upside. I would not fight that trend. However, it's not like we are, you know, ripping massive momentum straight up and it's like going crazy. So that's kind of like the way I would categorize it, uh, which is good for, I think, individual stock trades, because when you look at individual stocks, some stuff will do well, some, some will not. In one example is Google's doing well as of late. It looks to me, we'll see if this follow through that happens next week. NVIDIA is breaking to the upside. I do like the looks of it. I'm in it. But if it breaks under today's low, low 900s, it's invalidated and maybe it's back into its consolidation and we, you know, live for another day. Um, but yeah, a lot of risk on stuff is we really weak today. That was strong on Wednesday, a little bit Thursday, and then it broke down. The other chart we're talking about was DraftKings that we'd liked to the upside. It still looks, it's an inside bar day. Like we're inside of yesterday's range, but uh, it's down about a percent today, but that's still above the breakout point. Look at the weekly chart. looks a lot better on the weekly time frame with a big volume thrust uh, at the bottom. So I like the looks of DraftKings, to be honest, weekly time frame wise. I do. So we'll see if that continues um, into next week and beyond. That probably takes time to play out. I would suspect a couple of weeks before we can really say, hey, did it work or not? Either it's going to come right back down and fail underneath like 44, or it's going to go 50 plus, and that would have been a great breakout trade. Which is not that far off. It hit 48, almost at 49 yesterday. So, yeah, I mean, there's some news there as well, but almost at 49 on the news spike, so almost got your 50 ready, which is kind of cool. But, yeah, so that's the deal. Just a general overview so far. My plan to, the plan for the rest of, well, the month of March, there, honestly, there's not a lot of trades to recap so far. We still got next week, so who knows? If the S&P trade pans out and if NVIDIA pans out, that would probably secure a green month. But I've literally taken like a handful, like you can count on one hand how many trades I've taken so far in March. Now, three of them came the past this past week. Two of them are still open, and then I think two of them were prior to like, the beginning of March, like way back. So probably the, the lowest volume month in a while. But my plan is I want that to be the case. I want the sizing to just, it might take a little massaging, a little bit of easing into like the sizing. Um, but I want to increase the sizing, but decrease the volume of trades. That's the plan. So looking for better setups. Cool. Yes. But also when we see good setups, we're going to hammer them with more size and, you know, That'll make it, it'll make up for there be only being a couple of trades a month or, you know, maybe 15 trades a month or something like that. I don't know. Maybe less, maybe 10. That 15 seems like a lot to be honest with you. To be, to be honest, unless the market's super, super hot, but Tesla didn't look good in pre-market. I was looking at that pre-market. I was like, oh, that looks bad again. And then it just gave, you know, re recovered all day from the lows, just kind of a grinder all day, which is still down, but I'm like, okay. Just when you see that type of stuff, man, it's like, because Tesla could be, one, could be one of those stocks that I think is like, people think that that's a buy because we keep going up. And so when we keep going up and we get past these events in the Fed and this and that, and you know, the sky isn't falling, it's like, oh my gosh, like Tesla could be the dip buy. It might, but it has not been so far this year. At some point, this may end up panning. Like if you broaden the scale and you say, hey, look, look out you know, 18 months from now, this may be an incredible opportunity. We obviously won't know. It's hindsight. We'll know, we'll know in hindsight. Uh, but it's been just weak. It has been weak and it is not a stock I would momentum trade. If I was a dip buyer and I was like, yo, I'm looking to buy dips on individual stocks, which I am not. I look at ETFs, not individual stocks. But if I was applying my dip buy strategy to individual stocks and Tesla happened to be an individual stock that I was like, yo, this is one that I want to buy and hold in dollar cost average into for the long term. Then yeah, this would probably be a decent, this is a general time to be like dip buying into it. Doesn't mean it's going to go higher, but you're getting a better deal versus buying Tesla at all time highs, which you know, two years ago you would have been doing and you're like, oh shit. Let's see what else is looking decent today. Uh, I have a lot of, I have other alerts. I want to say that, that we have pending. 
CME. Oh yeah. CME, this is now, let me go to the daily chart. CME group, I have an alert for above 222 or so for a breakout to the upside. That could be, that's a random stock I've never traded before, I don't think. Maybe I have, but not active, not very actively. Just watching that area. HPQ, what is HP? It's HP, it's HP. Above this 31 area looks interesting. But th these are just alerts that I have open that I have, that have yet to trigger. Uh, Unity software underneath 2450 looks really nasty to the downside. Doesn't mean that that's uh, short, but doesn't look good. Roku, same thing. Roku is in what I look like. looks like a pretty nasty bear flag. The problem, though, that I have with these short situations is that the S&P has not broken down. It's still, you know, holding pretty strong with, you know, with where its trend has been. It's actually very strong. So, yes, do these look like good bear flags? If they break, could they be, like, really good? Maybe... The problem that I have, though, is that I've taken a couple of these trades over the past couple of weeks, months, I guess, so far this year, and, and then none of them have panned out. I don't think a single one has panned out. Not a lot of them. I've not taken a million of them, but not a single one. So it's like it just kind of gets me like, yeah, why am I going to bother with trying to short, you know, these stocks or that may have decent short setups. But when the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow look this strong, it's like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just not worth it. So that would be just that's those are probably trades that I don't I don't really see value in unless you know we're we're, we're S and P starts rolling over and we're breaking down and we can clearly break the trend to the downside, and now we have you know some momentum behind that some volume behind that that's kind of my 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 approach. Not a whole lot of trades, but I'm in two positions, both swings. Don't mind lower commissions and lower stress. <laughs> yeah, that's true. With the um, I guess it's technically a new broker that I'm using now through the, the two accounts that I have. So I'm curious. I got to check what the commissions are. I guess we're going to find out. We're going to find out swap fees if we had any, if, there, if we had any swap fees, which is really just overnight fees, um, and then commissions, which I don't think they have on one. I don't think there is commissions on the NVIDIA trade. There's no, there's no commissions on stock trades. Uh, I don't believe on that account. So I know that one's okay. Uh, I'm curious if there's swap fees. If there's not swap fees, that's a juicy, that's definitely a juicy swing trade account based off my current, Based off the way I'm currently looking at things, so we'll see. But yeah, there's um yeah we're really I'm just testing the waters with uh, with some of these prop firms and just seeing if you know there's value in them. And so what I did was I have one account that like I mainly use that I've been mainly using, but then I bought two other smaller ones to kind of like test the waters and to test the trade copier and also to test out another prop firm that that apparently caters to stocks. And so I was like, hey, let's try this. Um, so I bought two smaller accounts, you know, less than a hundred bucks each for the challenge and so we'll we'll see and they all are through dx trade as the platform and then eight cap as the broker i believe so we should be able to streamline the trade copier once that is good to go hopefully in the next like week or two so it should be easy to trade on one account and have it just connect to all of them but you know we will see i'm sure there'll be some kinks there as well just like anything else Put call ratio went nutty today. Damn, a lot of puts being slapped. It's a lot. That's actually a really interesting. I haven't followed this very closely, but these spikes meaning like a lot more puts are being bought today, essentially. So a lot of people are buying puts. Let's check in on the sentiment survey really quick. Okay, look at this. This is actually notable. Um, we now have for the week ending 320. So this is what, you know, this came out on Thursday morning, 43.2% bullish, which is actually the lowest bullish reading we've seen in about a month or maybe more. I'm not sure exactly how far we can go back and look at these, but in a while, a uh, decent amount, still neutral, fair, but the mo a pretty decent push towards bears. So we have a decent amount more bears than we've had as of late. So you get that little mini reset. Um, Fear and greed index. Let's check, take a peek at what this looks like. It's still high. It's because of the way things have, I think it's because the S&P is up, strength is up, breath is up. Put calls have gone up. Um, this would be interesting because you would I would suspect this would number would be, well, no, this is a five day average. So it averages it out, but, but puts, you know, more puts are being, you know, bought a little bit as of the past, past couple of weeks, actually, since we hit lows of 0.69 in early March, and they've been kind of just slowly grinding up since. So more puts are being bought generally on average, which I think you can see. Eh, I mean, this today helps, right? Today helps. 
a lot on that. So yeah, that's good. I mean, if, if we're going to go higher, you know, you kind of want to see that if that's what's going to happen. You know, you'd want to see people buying puts, people getting a little skeptical because that's going to help fuel the up. You can't have everybody on the same side. A little poll here. That's kind of cool. 11.2% of people said they should have, the Fed should have raised rates. <laughs> and 5.6% said they should have cut. Seems like everybody is on the same page, though, in terms of the Fed and stuff. It's it's just interesting. Um, while we're here, let's take a peek at what we got score-wise. Anything interesting going on? Holy shit. UAB and San Diego State are going to be coming down to the wire. That is kind of big because San Diego State was the uh, team in the in the final last year. So they could go down first round. Could be kind of crazy. Oh my gosh, Marquette. I think I have Marquette in the final four. So that's that's not going to be great if that, <laughs> if that happens. UConn, who I picked to win it all, which is pretty popular pick, but I picked them to win it all. They just started their game. Also, I think I have Nebraska going very far as well. So <laughs> I think I have Vermont beating Duke. See what happens there. And James Madison would be going pretty far as well, just for fun. But. But yeah, hopefully we have good games. And and to be honest, as I'm speaking, that there is two games that will be ending over the course of the next like half hour that will be that look to be good. So that's great. That's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for in March, right? It's one of those days where it's like I saw this. These were the this is the time of year. These two days, this Thursday and Friday, in late March every year or my favorite back in like high school and stuff, even middle school, back when like you like just got your phone and like even I was on probably like an iPod and I would get the apps or and then I started figuring out how to like stream these these games like on those like free websites through the depths of the internet and I would just be sitting in class just watching games. It was like the best thing of all time. <laughs> Nothing compares to those days. When like you're looking around and like you know a couple friends who are also watching the game and you're like, holy fuck. <laughs> While like your professor or your teacher's like going over some like, you know, math homework or some shit. <sighs> TOT, oh yeah, well, that's because of 10 year. But TOT is up past couple days decently. Yeah, decently off the low. Yeah, we're looking at this and this and the same thing. You got a wedge here on this guy. So like, you really just have you know, lower highs, and then you, it was looking like something here, but now, you know, maybe this little higher low, barely a higher low, but barely something maybe can be a little bit of a stepping stone for eventually a break out of that downtrend. We'll see on it. Uh, oh, it's been taking its time. It's been taking its sweet time. This has not really moved. Now, it did move a lot off the lows, and you knew it was going to happen at some point from October on. Like, you knew it was coming at some point. Like, the the 10-year over five we kind of knew that that was going to eventually reverse. Just didn't know when. But this move has been, you know, it's big, but it's been kind of stalled right now because you're seeing this this like slow moving period. He's a big cookie clicker on the iPad <laughs> on iPod in class all day in middle school. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think back, like, it was, like, a lot, honestly, middle school was funny, too, with that stuff. Because I think middle school, at least for me, was when, like, I don't know when I got my first phone. I think I got my first phone in high school. I don't think I got it in middle school. It was, like, an Android something. A Droid Lucid, maybe. I think that, that rings a bell. That's what it sounds like, I think. But I had an iPod, though. I was ripping the iPod for a while. That was a middle school. That was middle school for sure. Where's the VIX hanging out? Ah, that check that out. That's interesting as well. Now, if you want to put a lot of weight into this, right? You could make the argument that the VIX just broke down its uptrend, which was trending for some time, which would signal market probably goes higher right? If this holds, if this holds, then the VIX goes lower, market goes higher. I would not, I would not short the VIX. It's not a thing I would do down here. It's not, I'm not interested in that. But from a signal perspective, that breakdown on bigger time frames 
on the weekly time frame, for example, may signal that we have the next leg down in this that might just bleed out a little bit, which potentially helps the market send it higher. Just looking around for little signs here and there is what we're doing. You know, we jump back to the bigger time frames. You know, it doesn't mean you can't have some volatility as we do, but same thing happened here. You know, massive, massive uptrend that broke down in April of last year. And what has the market done since? Well, well, if you go back to the, well, it's been going up more than since then. But if you go back to April of last year, where can I mark that out? Where would that be? Oh, that's back here. Shit. Now that's in here. That's here. So we actually had a really big move shortly after that VIX breakdown on the bigger trend. We had a really nice move for a couple of months, like very steady move for from April through like, let's just say May, June, and July. And then we had that pullback. And then we went higher, way higher after that. But dude, when you look at these charts, I'm like, remember, remember how we were talking about this though? Like, and I think I'm I'm happy with when I look back at, at my prior, like I can pull up prior lives. We were talking about this stuff, and we were talking like, hey, if the S and P, you know, early in this next year goes 500 plus, like, you know, I'm I'm gonna start taking money off the table from my investment portfolio. And what's exact? We are at 521 as I speak right now in March. So we're in the first three months of the year and the S&P has done exactly that. Now, was that a prediction? No, it wasn't a prediction, but it was a if statement. If, then I will do this. And I've started to do that. And I'm honestly happy that I'm not thinking in a manner of like, oh, we're going up. So let's make sure we go all in margin, all that stuff. Now you can event like the, the problem with that mindset is that it works when the market keeps going. So if you, if you, if we keep going up, like that will work and you're going to make more and more money, which is awesome. You'll make, you know, your returns will be great. But the also the second problem is that, or the problem is when the top gets put in, you will likely be max leveraged. And we don't want to be max leveraged at the top. We don't want that to be the case. Now, no one knows when the top's going to get put in, but there could be, well, not even there's not. I'm not even gonna say that there's signs. Not not we're not in the business of trying to predict that because you don't need to predict that. Who cares? All you can look at is just history and say, hey, we are up a lot as of late. This move just by itself is incredible. When you look at these, when we're looking at a weekly chart right now, look at how just consistent, how much of a grind that's been. There has not been substantial pullbacks in here at all couple of days here and there, but nothing massive. This was more of your bigger pullback. And that was only a couple of months from like end of July into like end of October. But in the grand scheme, that's not even that big, but this move is just, it's honestly kind of incredible. Uh, they're not, the thing that's crazy too, is that these are not massive candles. It's just slow and consistent grinding. Like that's what it is. It's just slow, consistent grinding. The bounce off the low was big as we can, as you kind of can get sometimes, but the slow and steady grind is just kind of, it really is incredible when you look back at it. Cause there's not a lot of times in history when, when the thing just, when SMB does that, you look at the move from now, I'm gonna cherry pick the low, from the low to the high, it's 27% from, from October lows to now on the S&P. Go back in other times, like in a similar time span and, and see, like this rally right here looks pretty substantial before the COVID, uh, the highs before COVID. You know, not maybe as long in terms of time period, but from low to high, you were at 18, 19%. And that wasn't really pretty, pretty good period of time, but we're at 27 right now. I guess this one, maybe, uh, yeah, there's, it's not as, it's not as easy to see a lot of those consistent runs. Um, there, this back in 2017, prior to the 2018, like high, that was a big one. You could say that was actually pretty big, yeah, but again, 18%. It looked big, but it wasn't. So you don't see this. You don't see this. Um, outside of rallies off of substantial lows, like after decent market corrections, like this is not, would this classify as a correction? I think it might. Yeah, it technically did, I guess. Yeah, because it was down over 10%. And that's what they call a correction. But yeah, that was, I mean, move we're seeing now is, is pretty cool. It's pretty pretty big 
nonetheless. And like all that, like that, that to me is like, does that mean we're going down? No. Does it mean we're going higher? No. It just means like, hey, like we've had a big move. So if we were to get, you know, a decent crackdown for a couple of weeks or months and big pullback, that wouldn't be surprising. So let's not just be massively max long over leveraged all in margin. I guess, you know, just to make sure it's just a way to sure up your backside. That is all. I really wish we could, I really, really wish for the streams I can play music, but I'll get freaking cracked down by YouTube. And it would probably sound like shit too, because the mic, I guess I could connect to their computer, but the mic would make it sound terrible. All right, let's check back in here. All two of these games are going to be coming down. This game's coming down to the wire. The UAB game. 13 minutes until market closes. UConn's already up by 20 in the first 10 minutes. That's actually hilarious. Is that unexpected? Not really. All right, let's check back in on these positions. So we have an S&P position. I believe I need to see, I would need SPY up near uh, 530-ish. Like just shy of 530 is my is my, my take profit on the S&P. Like the equivalent, no, maybe it's a little bit less. Like 528, 529, I want to say would be the equivalent on SPY for my S&P futures long. So we'll see if we get that next week. The NVIDIA trade, that one, we're looking good on that one. I mean, the thing looks pretty good and we'll see if it can rally to the close, but the, either way that the volume is decent there. I played it on the four hour break. So, you know, broke out and we're above the breakout, not a big retest, which is kind of nice. If you go to the five minute, you know, you had a pullback, not that I really care about VWAP that much, but it just rolled right off the VWAP. S&P bounced off towards off near its lower day and you're pushing into the close. If we close above 940, that's a great looking close to me. So volumes are already decently above yesterday and the day before. So you're looking at a better volume day. So you, all those things are aligning. The, the view that I have too on this is I want to see what happens at this, this high if it gets there before my stop loss, which is, it doesn't have to, that may be like an early next week thing if the market stays strong. And it may, doesn't, market might not matter. NVIDIA might just do its own thing for all we know. But my concern, or not my concern, but the, the interest is that because of this volume, because of this high and the way that that candle looks, I, th I would suspect you have a decent amount of people. This would have been, a, if I was trying to short a top, which I don't do that anymore, where would I put my stop loss? My stop loss would be right here. Now, some people may be getting out of that position today because they're like, hey, it's holding up strong. Market's pretty good. I'm just going to get out. And maybe that's why today is up for all we know. But my, just from a psychological perspective, I would have had my, I would, if I got in short on NVIDIA after this day, let's say somewhere in here, I would have my stop loss up around this area. So like 975 would be my stop loss. So I'm curious if we get, if the thing rips through that next week, if it does, how quick do we hit a thousand or do we get to a thousand? Is there going to be a, a big psychological resistance at a thousand or do we just, this, this thing just blast through and that, and, and that cause a, a short squeeze off that level? I don't know. So I'm curious what happens there. And that's kind of what I'm looking at is like my next kind of gauge. So I have a, a profit target set just shy of a thousand dollars that's like a three to one risk reward that's a big risk that's a big you know thing I, I i don't normally target a three to one so if i go do the math like from my entry point to where i have my stop set you're looking at approximately if you go up towards a thousand i have it set to like i think 990 something yeah it's it's in, in, right right around 990 is around a 2.98, so about a three to one risk reward. So you're looking at a three to one risk reward, which is a big ass risk reward. Uh, Nvidia could be a totally a stock that can do that. I'm not like, it, it, if there's a, a stock to, to choose for a three to one risk reward, I think this is a good one to choose because it can move a lot. Um, however, I am 
interested in seeing what it does at this area, this 975, if it can get up there. So that's how I'll gauge it. If it has a massive hard reaction to the downside, I'll likely just lock a decent chunk of it in, two thirds or a half. And then I'll move my stop to break even for the rest and we'll see if it can get to a thousand or more. And we'll scale out accordingly. So that is the plan on the NVIDIA trade, which is the only new position. Gold, we got stopped out of S&P, we're still in. S&P hasn't done much since we got in, but that's fine. We're, we're up on it, but not a lot. We are up. My entry on this was not early necessarily. Uh, also a four hour trade. This, it was somewhere in here. So I didn't get it like on the initial exact break. I got it somewhere in here because that was after Powell stopped speaking. So it's somewhere in there, but stops are still underneath that, that big candle. And as you look back to gold, that did not hold it. Really, it gave back the entirety of the move so far, so I am out of that. Could it be a good bounce point? Yep, maybe, but I'm out. I don't care. She didn't do what I wanted. She didn't do what I wanted her to do. So we kick her to the curb. Um, that may have sounded a little harsh, but. So you gotta be with some of these charts, you know? If you're not, let, if you let them hang around, you let them stick stick around too long, they just suck the life out of you, and, and that's not good. We don't want that. What's going on, Shub? Doing good. How are you? Let's check on our... Oh. <laughs> The cattle, the cattle futures we're looking at. Remember we were looking at feeder cattle a couple days ago? See how it just hasn't done anything? <laughs> it's like had this downshot, but it hasn't done anything. So it's funny to look at some of that stuff, but live cattle futures are just in consolidation. But uh, I would imagine the moves are quite slow if you were to start playing some of these. I don't want to say they're exotic because it's people will trade this stuff and, and there's a market for it right but slightly more obscure futures contracts i think you have to be a little more patient with that stuff s p just went green spy went green it's like about it's trying to go green red to green it was green a little bit earlier then it was red then it was green so look at that though we got on the stream and we're like yeah it doesn't look too great pushing to lows. And then ever since we started saying that, we've gone right back up nearly to high of day to the top of the range almost. So that is, I was hopeful this was not going to be how the week would finish up, but it seems like it has, even though we have underlying trends to the upside, which are good and strong. But inside of that, it's still like, mm. so I'm happy that I'm not trading the five minute chart. That's all I can say because there would be a lot of fake outs, a lot of false breaks, a lot of, well, if you're, if you're a range trader, this is great. If you like ranges, you are loving this stuff, but market doesn't always range. Good and bad to both sides, right? So my view is when it comes to strategy, pick one, stick with one and don't try to time when to use one or another or another or another because that is a loser's game and it will make you want to blow your brains out. And if you want to blow your brains out, you're probably not going to think about your risk management the same way that maybe you should. And that's going to ultimately be a drag and a, and a, and a weight on your main strategy or on other things that you know you wish be focusing on. So like if you, if you try to time, you know, every day, like I used to do this, if, if I tried to come up, wake up every single day and say, okay, market's gapping up overnight, gapping down here, are the resistance support levels. Okay. I'm watching these things. Like I'm watching this, like uh, yesterday's high, yesterday's low. If I gave a shit about all that stuff all the time and try to time, you know, a trade to the upside and downside and play like all these different types of styles, I would finish the week so exhausted that's not to mention, that's not even my job. Like I have a lot of other shit that I do during the week. I'd finish the week so exhausted that I would want to freaking go into a hole and never look at a chart again. 
and that's not going to be that's not going to be a positive for the longevity of a career, right? Why well, you're going to burn out or blow an account? One or the other is going to happen first, and most likely you're going to burn out and blow an account, and want to just like you know never trade again. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to think about the mental health of it, but also the longevity, right? There will be like if you like I, I we talked about this a while ago. I like if you just look for a couple of really good trade setups for the entirety of this year so far. One of those trade setups would have been this NVIDIA to me, at least. You know, this breakout over this level right here would have been a massive and incredible trade. And this could have been like a big position and it could have been, it could have made the year for all you know, you know what I mean? Like, by the way, look at that on the weekly. I mean, now were these all up weeks? You got to go a little bit in, and do some inspection. Let's see. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yes, though close, but yes, up. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Nvidia, because we get when you look at this, if you go to, to uh, hollow candles, yeah, holy fuck, um, damn. But yeah, so Nvidia has had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven green weeks in a row 11 weeks in a row where the stock has gone up from the prior week's close that is nuts that is actually nuts to me is that i don't think you know there's i'm sure there's a stats guy out there who can figure it out but i don't think that there are many stocks that could say that for 11 plus 10 plus weeks 11 weeks in a row we're going to be 11 this is and and it and and the best part about it too is like now anything could happen next week. The chart looks like it's about to be breaking out again, or it is, and it could be up a, another chunk next week, which could put you at twelve, which is insane. Now, of course, anything could happen next week, and next week you've got PCE data, which I believe is on Friday. Yeah, so that could be you know the make or break if we're kind of uh, you know hovering around you know, break even on the week for NVIDIA, then if this is good or bad, could give you the first red week in a while or send it higher and go green. But dude, that is nuts. Now that I think about it, it's like, oh my God. So next week, not, I mean, not a lot until, I think really just Friday is when the pick, we get the biggest, uh, and Powell speaks. Oh shit. We got a lot. Friday's going to be a big ass day. You got PCE and Powell. Oh damn. That's going to be a day. Not that it really, how much does it matter, but it'll be good to see how the market reacts. So hopefully when we get some reactions and we don't just freaking consolidate for the entire week. I hope, I hope not. Uh, as we speak, spy with a minute to go is dumping. I'm, I'm dumping. It's pulling back. When I say dumping, it's just because we're looking at a very narrowed in time frame. Despite this candle looking very nasty, and look at that, holy shit, low of the day. So we came up towards the high of the day range, and now you're dumping down towards not not low of the day. We got close. Um, but do the math. This high that we made a minute ago, a few minutes ago, ten minutes ago. 522.36 and where we currently trade at is 521.25. So not even a dollar. Not, well, I guess about a dollar. About a dollar range, um, which is not a lot on SPY. A dollar range on SPY, you know, it's 0.18%, which is not that much in the grand scheme. Again, because SPY is above 520, which is insane to say, A, but B, a five dollar move is now oh, okay. Ten dollar move, all right, right. But a, a one dollar move on spy is like, eh. eh. Who cares? Um, with that though, we wrap up. Let's check out Finviz quick just to see how everything else was doing. Um, we had a thirty percent advance their day, which is not that great. Um, a lot more new highs and new lows because we are skewed towards new highs. Sixty-five percent of stocks above the fifty SMA. Sixty-seven point eight above the two hundred SMA. And uh, yeah, everything was red except the NASDAQ. NASDAQ was green by a tiny bit. 
So it kind of makes sense. The Dow was pretty weak today, to be honest. I was actually very weak today. The Russell was pretty weak as well. The S&P and the NASDAQ were just kind of in range. So there you guys have it. Hope you have a great rest of your Friday, great weekend. We need to check in on some of these scores. Oh, shit. These games. Well, that Marquette just blew up, just took it out. They just pulled away. It looks like San Diego State should be able to do it. Let's refresh, make sure I'm not behind here. Should be able to sneak by. Yeah, they should. But that was close. Yeah, they just did. They just got the win. Got the dub. Barely, though. Close call, though. All you can ask for, though, is good games. So there's that. Nothing else is looking even remotely close for now. So hope you guys have a great weekend. This should be another interesting week. Next week, we'll have, we should have a bunch of live streams next week. Again, kind of same schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Power Hour, Tuesday, Thursday at the Open. We've got some, we've got a trade recap coming this weekend. We've got two open positions. So there'll be trade recaps. So they'll start getting pushed back through as just when, I don't know, whenever the positions get closed.